Welcome, dear learners. Today uh, we will be discussing about the biogas and biofuel research. Uh, how India has become a sustainable energy source in the area of biogas and biofuel. <clears throat> I'm Dr. Fayaz Ahmed Malla, a research scholar and a researcher in the field of environmental science. Let us first discuss about the biofuels. As we all know, the biofuel is a type of fuel derived from the organic sources like plants, algae, and other organic wastes, such as the various kinds of crops and non-crop or lignocellulosic biomass. So these organic sources or biofuels can be developed or regenerated within a short span of time unlike the fossil fuels which take over millions of years to develop or regenerate so in the course of the development of biofuels there has been various stages so each stage has been named as the generation of biofuels so the first generation of fire biofuels are primarily produced from the edible crops such as corn, sugarcane, soya bean and vegetable oils. The source is mainly containing of sugars or the lipids or fatty acids. So the type of the biofuels were mainly the ethanol from the sugars and starch and the biodiesel mainly from the vegetable oils and animal fats. So the main issue with this kind of generation of biofuels was it was making a competition between the food production and the biofuel production because the same source or same feedstock is used for the biofuel generation which is used as a source of uh, food for the population. So in the course of development, the second stage or the second generation of biofuels, they were used from the non-food sources. Non-food sources such as lignocellulosic biomass, like from the agriculture residues or the other wastes, and particularly uh, the crops like switchgrass or miscanthus. So the biomass or the way they were converted into the bio bioethanol and other kind of ethanol or cellulosic ethanol so this uh, generation of the biofuel addressed the issues or the disadvantage of the first generation of the biofuel so next generation of the biofuel is they're called as third generation of biofuels basically these were derived or obtained from the algae which has high amount of fatty acids or lipids so we can have uh, m number of the algae we can be which, which can be used for the biodiesel production such as chlorilla which can be grown in waste waters which has high oil content it rapidly grows and ability to have uh, habit, ha, hab, have habitat in various di diverse kind of conditions and it also does not compete with the uh, uh, i mean food crops for this uh, land or the biofuel production and uh, the conceptual kind of generation of the biofuels in which various technologies or various practices are involved to enhance the biodiesel or bio biofuel generation from the third generation of the biofuel is called as fourth generation of the biofuels in which various genetic methods are involved to enhance the lipid productivity in the algae so that can uh, improve the efficiency of existing biofuel production process so there are various kinds of the methods biorefinery concepts involved in kind this kind of uh, biofuel generation biofuel production so now we uh, 
come directly to the biogas what is the biogas as we all know biogas uh, is the mixture of various kinds of gases particularly methane having the concentration ranging from 55 to 65 percent carbon dioxide from uh, 30 to 40 percent and there are some impurities also like hydrogen sulfide moisture silosens and other hydrocarbons so the biogas can be generated from various kinds of the feedstock like agriculture waste manures like cow dung principal waste is kitchen waste is sewage or any kind of organic waste so this is the a uh, very important kind of source of energy particularly in rural areas so the amount of methane and carbon dioxide is very variable depending upon the feedstock depending upon the climatic conditions in the biogas generation so if we uh, talk about the development or the production of biogas and biofuel in India. So currently, uh, in 2023, India is expected to produce 200 million liters of biodiesel, and it went up from 185 million liters from 2022. And government is also expected the consumption will increase slightly to 190 million ton or 190 million liters in 2023 by the end of this year in case of biogas according to the indian institute of guwahati india has the potential to produce 80000 uh, tons uh, of compressed biogas per day which could replace 50% of its current diesel uh, use in transportation and this is a huge figure how much of the pollution can be reduced with the help of this kind of uh the compressed biogas uh, as a source of fuel so there are some policy interventions also for enhanced the production of the biogas and biofuels like government initiatives so in 2023 indian government has launched several programs to support biofuel development for example as a uh, DAT stands for Sustainable Alternative Towards Affordable Transportation. It was launched in 2018. Basically, uh, the government under this scheme uh, develops a program in which uh, they plan to have around 5,000 compressed biogas plants in India. Likewise, there are some other uh, uh, schemes also like Pradhan Mantri uh, Jeevan Yojana this is also involved in uh, the biofuel sector for enhancing the bioproduct production that was launched in 2019 and there are some research and development also going on in case of bioenergy which we will be discussing later in this slide regarding the policy intervention for enhanced uh, production the research of development has an important part in the biofuel or biogas generation so there is uh, the scope of the feedstock innovation in case of biogas uh, like optimize diverse kind of feedstock for biogas production including agriculture residues organic wastes and in case of biofuel the research and development focus on identifying and developing non-food or sustainable feedstocks for biofuel production like lignocellulosic biomass LK, and waste materials and there are some advanced conversion technologies also uh, by which we can uh, improve the anaerobic digestion enhance the biogas yields and uh, upgrade the biogas so regarding the upgradation of the biogas i will uh, be discussing a short case study of uh, my own research later in this uh, video and in case of biofuel uh, advanced conversion technology such as cellulosic ethanol production and thermochemical processes 
like gasification and pyrolysis are areas of active research i mean to make biofuel production more efficient so the policy intervention regarding research and development can also be seen uh, for the microbial engineering in case of biogas for enhanced anaerobic digestion and biofuel for for example bioethanol production biohydrogen production so there are still a scope in uh, this kind of uh, the area then waste to energy integration focuses on the biogas and biofuel production in waste management systems so incorporating the research and development in case of biogas and biofuel with the circular economy so in which the waste management can be done means the waste can be minimized and can be converted into the energy like electricity so for the technological uh, integration and scaling up there is a scope of developing and optimizing integrated biorefinery concepts like the wastewater uh, uh, for example in case of wastewater uh, treatment along with the biofuel production like algae biomass production and convert it into biofuels or biodiesels and also the sustainability and life cycle assessment uh, then uh, there are various international collaborations for enhanced biogas or biofuel production so there are n number of the agencies involved in this area like international energy agency global bioenergy partnership then an uh, advanced motor fuel technology collaboration program biofuture platform european technology and innovation platform energy and international collaboration on algae biofuel research so these all are collaborating with various indian institutes academic or universities or research organizations for enhanced or for the technological sharing for enhanced biofuel and biogas production so uh, let us delve into the some benefits that current issues of the uh, world uh, for example uh, the biogas helps in reducing the carbon footprints so the biogas uh, has a lower carbon footprint as compared to fossil fuels see when we burn the fossil fuels the carbon dioxide which is emitted has been uh, basically trapped millions of years ago so we are just emitting that kind of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere which increases the carbon dioxide con concentration but in case of biofuel and biogas the carbon dioxide which is emitted is already in in the system like when we grow the crops they absorb the for example carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and the same carbon dioxide may be emitted at the time of uh, the burning of their uh, of that biogas and biofuel so according to the jsm biogas can reduce greenhouse gas emission up to 90 percent so there are various other benefits which i discuss which will i be discussing regarding the biogas so first one is it creates jobs so biogas can create local jobs in technical manufacturing and construction trades and generate investment can uh, generate billions of dollars of investment in rural communities and it creates byproducts also like the biogas slurry which can be used as a biofertilizer and it saves energy around 53.3 percent energy expenditure because the uh, biogas can be used in lightening it can be used as a cooking uh, fuel so it can reduce our energy consumption it saves the time of the woman uh, which they uh, currently are using for the searching of the fuel wood in the i mean the forests and they can use that time for other uh, skill development at their homes or at skill centers and uh, it improves soil health by contributing clean air or water 
and creates organic fertilizers like biogas slurry having high nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium concentration. It controls pollution. I mean, it is very eco-friendly at household level and it controls global warming because biogas uh, can reduce the carbon dioxide emission and uh, certainly it reduces the greenhouse gas emission and can control global warming at smaller scale. So the case study which I was discussing earlier involves a method of methane enrichment in biogas using selective chemical scavengers and microalgae. So there were two stages. First stage I used the biogas which I got from this biogas plant and sampled in this uh, uh, modified sleeping bag I mean kind of this pillow sleeping pillow air pillow then uh, took the sample to the laboratory and these are kind of assembly arranged for the various chemicals to be used and treating the biogas for the uh, I mean the reduction of the carbon dioxide concentration. So there were various alkaline solutions like potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, monoethanol amines, glycols, they were used. So in next uh, method, I used the microalgae. So from the biogas plant, I took the samples and uh, uh, passed it from an assembly containing the microalgae, Glorilla minutissima which not only uh, captured the carbon dioxide in the biogas but also converted that carbon dioxide in the biomass that can be used for the biofuel or biodiesel production so this is the assembly light sources so this was the actual the uh, picture which i uh, used to develop in the laboratory or culture room this is the balloon having the biogas and this is a tank containing chlorella minotissima and this uh, gas is getting treated uh, in this uh, tank and some of the carbon dioxide is uh, absorbed in the water and some is uh, absorbed by the microalgae and uh, uh, later on uh, we converted that biomass into the bi biodiesel. So the cost of this method using the alkaline uh, scrubbers or chemicals like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide is uh, around 7.2 uh, rupees per cubic deci uh, per deci cubic meter. So uh, the cost was around 7.2 means the cost of enrich enriching or upgrading the biogas. So the same cost uh, the same, uh, I mean, the setup with uh, the help of the microalgae in which various kinds of the chemicals were used for the culturing is well, was around 0.78, means 10 times less than the chemicals. So the uh, take of this research was that microalgae is not only enrich the biogas, but they also help in uh, treating the wastewater and they also help to uh, production of the biodiesel at the end of the process and uh, in this sector India has the various policies and programs regarding the biofuel development so the first program national biogas and manure management program was developed in 1981-82 it was uh, basically for providing the household size biogas plants for cooking and for lighting purpose later on uh, the biogas power of grid program it was an extension program of national biogas and manual management program it was launched in uh, i mean uh, around 2014 and it promotes biogas for decentralized power generation and thermal appli applications as well as energy recovery from industrial urban and agriculture wastes so the aim of this was around uh, to produce 32 to uh, 1500 cubic meter per day of the biogas so there was a national policy on the um, biogas or biofuels it was uh, in uh, i mean initiated or established in 2018 it was basically aimed at to 
reduce the imports of the biofuels so the more reliance on the indigenous biofuel or biogas production in 2020-22 the government revised its target to 20 percent ethanol blending in petrol uh, to 2025 and there was a scheme which i uh, already discussed uh, that is sustainable alternative towards uh, affordable transportation launched in 2018 for compressed biogas to develop 5000 compressed biogas plants in india by 2025 and there were other uh, programs also uh, li like pradhan mantri jeevan yojana launched in 2019 then ethanol blending that was and uh, started in 2003 then uh, recently there is a program called gobardhan like galvanizing organic bio or uh, agro resources scheme in 2018 and there is also a scheme called repurpose used cooking oil in which used cooked oil is uh, used as a source or as a, as a feedstock for regenerating the bioethanol or biofuels from the waste cook oil so the future prospects of biogas and biofuels like the global expansion is there the potential to generate energy from uh, currently available and sustainable grown recovered major feedstocks like manure food waste sewage crop residues and energy in world is around uh, 10,100 to 14,000 terawatt hours so this is a huge figure so the global expansion has good scope in this area then technological advancements research and technological advancement in biogas and biofuel production paving the way towards more efficient cost effective processes policies and investments has a good i mean uh, uh, can uh, be a good instrument for uh, expansion of the biofuels and biogas favorable policies and investments basically and this was all about the research and uh, about the biofuels and biogas for our sustainable economy particularly in india thank you thank you very much